Hello, I'm Eve, the creative curator. Today I am, oh, first of all, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Second of all, today I'm going to show you how to sew a jetted pocket. Now, a jetted pocket is an actual pocket type. A lot of people don't seem to recognise its existence, instead referring to a jetted pocket as a double welt pocket. There's no such thing as a double welt pocket. <laughs> Let me explain. This is my other half's wonderful tweed jacket, which he loves. This, you can barely see it because it's so well pattern matched. This is a welt pocket. It's a functioning welt pocket. It has a pocket that you can put your hand into. Okay, that is a welt pocket. On the inside, with the two lips, that is a jetted pocket. But hold on. <laughs> there is also, it's such a big jacket, there's, oh dear. A jetted pocket with flap. Oh, he's got a face mask in there. <laughs> so this is what a jetted pocket with flap looks like. It has a jet on the lower, a jet on the upper, and a flap inserted. I am going to show you how Oh, this needs repairing. <laughs> How to make a jetted pocket in a tailoring fabric without the flap. Jetted, not double welt. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and ring the bell so YouTube lets you know when I post a new video. In the moment, all this week, I'm gonna be posting pocket videos. So we've got all sorts of pocket tutorials coming out. On Sundays, I normally drop a vlog, which is a little bit more personal. What's going on in my life that week, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, next week we'll have some pattern making tutorials. So super exciting. Give the video a like, subscribe, and let's learn how to do a welt. No, a jetted pocket. <laughs>
And then the same thing for the main pocket section. Okay, the next job is to sew these into position. I'll be sewing them at about 0.5 centimeters either side. Okay, I have stitched into position. I marked in 1.5 centimeters either side using my measure seam gauge as you can see and now we come to the risky bit which is basically we need to turn these into lips that look here's a sample like this and so there's a bit of finger manipulation when we do this we're going to want to work it and make it nice you can see this is a beautiful pattern matched one that i've done previously um so this is where it gets risky we need to cut two but not through i always get that confused this if you think of this as a lozenge so imagine this is a long rectangle and imagine that 1.5 centimeters in from here we're going to stop our straight line in the center and we're going to cut a a diagonal to the point so two but not through to create a little triangle on each end so i'm going to show you that process so that um it's not scary for anyone watching this so the easiest thing is to turn it over we've got our basted guideline here that we had thread marked in i'm going to take again my trick marker and my measuring guide I'm just going to make sure that's set at 1.5 centimeters and on that middle blue line you can see it's running middle across the center i'm just going to put a dot and again the other side and what that's going to do is just help me stop cutting at the right point i'm also going to remove the basted thread marking because I don't want that to peek through on my pockets. Mm, I think I have stitched over. Yeah, it's not going to come through. <laughs> so then you want to make sure that all your pieces are out the way. And I'm doing this with my fingers underneath. Do you know what? Normally I would press through with a rotary cutter, but I'm so nervous of teaching you how to shortcut it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start my cut line in the center with my rotary cutter. Can you see that hole? And what that's going to enable me to do is to get in you want to make sure you're not cutting the pocket pieces underneath, which I think I just caught, just caught. The problem is when you're doing a jet pocket, the lips are so narrow, it can be really hard to cut them. There we go. Oh, rubbish, sorry. In the same, the other direction. Yeah, I think I hacked a little bit, but it's fine. And then the two, but not through. And you really do need to get right into that corner without cutting the stitches. Otherwise, you're going to have a wonky pocket. Can you see that? I've just created a triangle. And the same on the other side. It's handy if you choose a fabric that's not going to fray like crazy as well. And there we have it, my lozenges. So if you flip the whole thing over, you can see I've got loose threads everywhere now. Um, we're literally going to turn the welt, sorry, not the welt, the top jet through like that. And then the front pocket piece through. I've done these the wrong way around. Crap, <laughs> this is supposed to be the back, <laughs> which would have gone on the top. Never mind. 
damn it. I always do that. Make a mistake. Too late now. I've cut into it. Okay, so you're bringing it all through. And then you want to manoeuvre. You should get your iron out. But you're basically just rolling the fabric over what you just created. Can you see? I'm manipulating it so it will sit nice. And that is one of the jets. So I'm going to repeat that for this side and this side and pin them in place to show you. At the moment, this is what it looks like from the right side. So I can see a little bit of the blue basting thread. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do the top one first. And I hope that you can see this. I'm just working the fabric really because we're going to hand stitch this as well. So if you think about when you're um, doing certain things, you normally push the seam allowance away. In this case, we're actually wrapping the fabric of the jet around the seam allowances. So can you see that? I'm making sure that the seam allowance is pointing upwards whilst bringing the pocket itself downwards. And then the problem I have with this fabric is it's quite bulky. I should have opted for a, well, I couldn't opt for a narrower one because I need the matching fabric for the lips of the jet. And what we're going to do is actually prick stitch with a hand sewing needle and thread to secure these nicely into place. And of course, the problem with pins is when you put the pins in, it does cause um, a sort of buckling effect. Hmm, something is happening that end. Let us try that part again. I can see my blue basting stitch there now. So we're just going to remove it. And this is known as stitch in the ditch. When we prick stitch through it, we're going to be hand stitching through that ditch that we have created with the fold. Some people would call it shadow stitching. So you can see we have that beautiful. And then we'll do the same for the other side. The other side is a bit bouncy as well. Of course, if you press this, you'll get a flatter finish, but I don't like to press mine until I've actually finished the hand sewing just because I don't want to like I don't know, risk fraying it and stuff and taking the pins out to press and all that shenanigans. Because once I take these pins out, it's going to bounce again because this is really bouncy fabric. Seem to have a little bit of thread there. I hope I didn't accidentally cut through too far. It's quite possible. I have a run, so it might be related to that. No, it's going in the right place. Hmm, that's really weird. It's just frayed right there. So I'm not going to put a pin in just in case. And then we're going to hand stitch now. Okay, I'm going to hand stitch this now. I've used a regular thread, um, but I've doubled it over. I'm going to start on the lower edge and work around the entire box. And I'm just doing a prick stitch. So as you can see, I'm miles away. So we're going to pop it through. I'm going to take out that pin and come through the ditch. And then back down.
You don't want to pull the stitch too tight because it will buckle the fabric. I learned how to do this um, during the tailoring module at fashion school on my fashion degree. And the person who taught me was called Moira. She was a lovely person. And it was her that always used to tell me not to sign up for a postgrad in pattern cutting at Central St. Martin's. She was like, you already have the skills, you already have the knowledge, that you're just wasting your money. And so I never did. It's still on one of my things to do list, but they don't actually run that course anymore. But I only really want to do it so I can say that I did it. <laughs> um, so you can see I'm just moulding the fabric with my fingers. <laughs> David's always like, you never make anything for me. And I'm like, well, the kind of things that you appreciate would take me so long to do. And it is like a labour of love. These kind of projects for somebody else. Because you want to pay great attention to detail. I mean, I do for my projects, for me. But, you know, especially if it's for somebody else, you want it to be the best that it can be. Oh, I have caught my stitches a little bit longer on the back than they should be. They are supposed to be invisible on the back. Relatively invisible. Mine are not. To help make them invisible, it's handy to go in at an angle. So I'm pushing my needle this like you can see the angle that it's going in at so it comes out further behind further along i've got cramp in my fingers <laughs> oh. so of course you want the finished widths to fit within the hole that you made by cutting it A little bit more bounce to it than I would like. Ooh. I'm going to continue the other side off camera because it'll be faster. Okay, so this is a the jetted pocket. It's a bit bouncier than I'd like. Um, but that's down to the fabric choice and the fact that they've all been interfaced. <laughs> As you can see, everything is interfaced. So this is the front. This is the back. Now I want to highlight two things. So I did two separately created lips. So these are jet lips, okay? You can see from the lower one that it's slightly puckered. This is the one where I used double thread. So I doubled up the thread that I was using. The top one, I didn't. As well, on the bottom one, I used a kind of simple stitch with so it's visible longer on the inside. Whereas the top one, I did it more invisible. Let me show you what I mean. So on the top, you can only just very faintly see where the stitches are. And you see a very slight pucker along here. On the bottom, you can actually see, physically see the stitches where they're just too long. Um, so I will take, I will unpick this and do this again. Um, but that does highlight the difference. The next job is to actually stitch the lozenges. So at the moment, you can see that the well, the jets can still wobble around and do things and we don't want that. So what we want to do is make sure your pocket is all lying flat and then fold back. And we want to stitch to secure the lozenge I think it was one of my tutors at university that called it a lozenge and it stuck with me. Along here, we just want to secure everything so that it's stuck permanently in position. You want to make sure that your welts, your jets are together. I keep calling it a welt because Americans call it a double welt and home sewers call it a double welt. But it's a jet pocket. And then we'll do the same on the other side as well. Can you see? And I actually have an issue with this side. where I cut through, I cut two, but the fabric frayed really close, even though it was fused. So I've actually put a little hand stitch there to try and hold them in place. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to do my lozenges 
and then once that's done and i might do this all in one go because it's um just a step that makes sense is you're going to take your your pocket facing so the right way here and you're going to attach it to the top along here and you're just going to sew around it all the way and then all the way down the sides along the hem and along the top and that will create your little pocket see hello that's quite a nice little pocket actually but first of all i need to fix this so that's essentially it you're going to stitch your lozenge and then you're going to sew your pocket bag boom 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 oh and along the top be careful not to catch anything inside okay you're literally just stitching around the perimeter of the pocket section okay the pocket's done <laughs> hello you see the fabric there and then on the reverse i need to get my overlocker repaired so in the meantime, I've just done a straight stitch all the way around. And then I did a zigzag stitch along the top and the bottom to try and limit any fraying. Um, I should probably do the sides as well. I'm not sure David will really use the pockets on his waistcoats. He doesn't normally. Um, so the very last step would actually be to do what's known as the baseball step uh, stitch, which is basically coming at a diagonal and just connecting the lips together so that they're closed and then it helps it to hang nice um but that's it that's the jet pocket jetted pocket or jet pocket some people would call it the double welt pocket but in english tailoring it is a jetted pocket um that's it so i hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoyed that here is the finished piece for you to see mm, isn't it beautiful Hello. <laughs> it's a really lovely jetted pocket. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said in the intro, there will be a pocket video dropping every single day this week. It'll be a tutorial with a little bit of info. Obviously, I forgot the info today. <laughs> um, here's another example. I don't know if I showed this in the video. I don't recall. Hello. So that is basically a jetted pocket and a tailoring fabric, um, a pattern matched one. It's a lot trickier to do, um, but it's really important just to um, use your fingers to manipulate the fabric over the seam allowance that you've cut into. So you get a really nice um, jet, basically. So it's like nice and firm, not too bouncy. Make use of your iron. Your iron will be your friend in getting a nice, clear, sharp jetted pocket. Don't forget to stitch everything nicely. If your stitching is wonky, undo it and start again if you want the best jets. And of course, if you're doing a jacket and you're going to have a jet pocket on either side, do the both, do the two of them at the same time so that you know they're going to be even, they're going to look right, they're going to sit right. It's the easiest way to do it. There you have it. Uh, give the video a like if you enjoy it. That's the little thumbs up symbol. <laughs> um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications from YouTube when I post a new video. Thank you once again for popping by and watching this one. Um, feel free to go binge all my other videos. Um, I appreciate your support and there's some information in the description for anything that's relevant, tools, that kind of thing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.